All right, everybody, welcome to our webinar here for the Olentangy Terrace Apartment uh, Investment Opportunity here in Central Columbus, Ohio. Joined today by uh, my partner at Greenlight Equity Group, Carl York, and uh, our partners in Columbus uh, from Realist Capital, Davide Formica, Formica and his team. Uh, my name is Tate Seamer. I'm uh, co-founder and uh, managing partner at Greenlight Equity Group. And we're really excited to talk to you about Olentangy Terrace, which really in a nutshell is a wonderful vehicle for capturing the exciting growth, almost a boom that's going on in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, and this is perfectly located at the foot of some seriously expanding industry in the way of uh, a major research hospital, Ohio State University, and a booming downtown area. And if you know what's going on in Columbus, there's a, a massive tech boom that is underway thanks to a $20 billion Intel factory, microchip factory that's going out in the northeastern suburbs of Columbus, which we will talk about uh, in depth. And this is just a great asset that captures the uh the the grow the ability to grow with that boom and with that economic expansion uh and we'll get into the hows and whys of why that's the case a few things to start off with uh initially need to mention to you that this is a 506c offering and that means that the sec requires uh, you to be an accredited investor to invest in this opportunity and that basically means that you need to either have a net worth of over $1 million that does not include your primary residence, or you need to have a uh, income annual income of at least $200,000 as an individual. Uh, for couples, those, those numbers are slightly more, so you'll want to do your research on that. It's important for us to mention that we, we are not legal professionals, we are not financial advisors, and we're not tax uh, advisors or attorneys. So it's important for you to, to do your own research and consultation and uh, make sure that you understand uh, the you know, inherent risks in, in investing and in any investing, of course, uh, and there is inherent risk in uh, any in opportunity, including this one. So you need to be uh, aware of that and comfortable with that. Uh, we feel like we've mitigated a lot of downside risk factors, but there, there is always uh, the the chance that money could be lost, right? That's just a reality of investing. A couple quick introductions. I, again, I mentioned Carl, who's you can see on the screen with me, uh, and uh, myself, a Greenlight Equity Group. Uh, we're the co-founders and managing partners. Uh, we're here in Utah. You can see the Wasatch Mountains behind me. Uh, if you if you're watching this on on a video, uh, and uh, we are uh, we invest primarily in Oklahoma City and actually more in more importantly Columbus Ohio these days we have uh, this will be community number six that we own in Columbus we've been investing there for about the last four years and are really excited about Columbus we we were already owned uh, two properties in Columbus and we were about to buy a third when the Intel announcement was made. And so we were already totally in on what we loved about Columbus then. And uh, obviously the Intel factory and the really seismic impact that that's made on the local economy and, and will continue to make as it gets implemented uh, has changed things massively and, uh, and really enhanced the opportunity there uh, we feel. so. You can see uh, statistically, we have 745 uh, units currently under management, uh, and that equates to just under 80 million in assets under management. Uh, we uh, also are partnered with a number of uh, different great sponsor groups and a few different projects as well. So, uh, and I of course mentioned uh, Davide for for Mika here uh, on this call with us and his team. Uh, love to uh, let him introduce himself and his team a little bit. So Davide, take it away. All right. Thank you, Tate. Uh, and, and thank you all for joining us in our latest uh, opportunity on Intangi Terrace. Uh, my name is Davide Formica, and I am co-founder and principal at Realist Capital. 
I am also a real estate agent with our in-house brokerage, Swiss Realty. And, uh, you know, we're based out of Columbus, Ohio, where we have a dedicated team, all of us full-time real estate professionals and operators with over 50 years of experience in real estate. We are uh, vertically integrated with property management, brokerage, development, and construction. Um, and then maybe I should add uh, how we met. Uh, mm -hmm. Great idea. Yeah. You, re you remember that launch, right? Mm -hmm. At the press grill? Yeah, 100%. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I've known Tate and Carl since uh, 2020. Um, basically, uh, I forget how we came in, in touch at first, but we met here in Columbus. We had lunch and we looked at a deal together. Uh, but anyway, finally, we had a chance to reunite and, and uh, come together as a team. Uh, Carl and Tate uh, came over to Columbus and we had a good extended meeting or a couple of meetings at the yeah. office. And it was just evident we had great synergy and um, definitely after discussing on Intangi Terrace uh, and seeing the tremendous potential in this asset, uh, not to mention the location. That's when this, we decided to join forces and moving ahead in acquiring and operating this asset. Um, and, and definitely uh, our alliances is not just for, for this deal and done. We see our, relationship going uh for many many years in the future yeah. so i appreciate you guys yeah yeah and just echoing the enthusiasm uh beyond carl's and my side of things for uh this partnership and uh, the really promising upside and future that it it presents all of us as uh you know on both teams and also all of you uh you know attendees and uh investors uh with us like the the alliance uh, and the the common core value and kind of common vision uh, around what we see as possible in Columbus and what we want to get done in Columbus is is really exciting. So uh, a few other team members to mention, Brian Briscoe and Kyle McEwen are part of our sponsorship group, uh, general partners. Uh, and then we have David Sayre and Chris Erickson, a part of Carl's and my team out here in Utah and uh, Arturo Rose and Nancy and Abraham are, are a team that has uh, helped us out on uh, the capital stack side and uh, kind of on an advisory role as well. So, uh, so real briefly, just kind of go over the whole property. I, I summarized the deal uh, right at the get go, tried to give you guys as much a glimpse into the possibilities and, and what we see as the upside and the plan here. Uh, but again, to kind of summarize, the, uh, this is a really like kind of uh, what what I would call a wheelhouse uh, value add project for really all three of us, Carl, uh, Davide, and our, and myself, Greenlight and Realist. We've done numerous uh, value add projects that require a physical renovation component, and uh, usually that's on a unit by unit basis. We we will uh, will basically upon turnover, a lease turnover, we will renovate units uh, sometimes significantly and sometimes add things like washers and dryers, for instance, in this case, uh, and that that will add a lot of value to uh, to the unit in terms of what we can get in the way of rent, and that of course increases net operating income, which increases the value of the property. That's the value add potential there. Um, Location we'll get into here in uh, just a minute. Uh, that's a huge part of the story here uh, with this property. And we will also touch on the uh, a piece of this deal that's really unique. It's got a piece of land that is uh, uh, basically redevelopable uh, attached to it. And we have uh, a plan on, on how to do that and uh, what the possibilities are there that we'll, uh, that we'll show you here briefly as well. Uh, you can see the key metrics over here. Uh, you'll see two different projected uh, sets of returns, uh, scenario one, and then scenario two is with that land entitlement uh, a project uh, that's got a profit center in year, th in year three of the deal that we'll talk about. But uh, even conservatively underwritten, we're looking at 
uh, over a 2x equity multiple. So you're looking at essentially doubling equity in uh, about a five-year uh, hold, five-year model. So a little shot of our uh, kind of entryway into the what is now the common laundry area. Um, and th the story here is that this this is a property that's been very well maintained. You can see 1970 construction and it's brick building. It's a brick exterior with a pitch roof. And it's, it's like I said, very, it's very nice condition. It's just kind of dated. You can see the color scheme here, beige. Uh, and when we get into the, the units, uh, we're, we're looking at just upgrading uh, carpet to LVT, uh, adding things like washers and dryers, et cetera. So um, really upgrading on a unit by unit basis. We love one thing to point out on this slide. Uh, the the floor plans here are very nice, generous square footages, and uh, especially in the two beds, 1,100 square feet, and gives us a lot to work with there. Uh, you, you notice here we're under we're we're buying this property for 6.15 million. I had a good question come up from one of my colleagues about why is it more than the asking price, right? That's right there at the top, pretty obvious. And the answer to that is uh, is we were not the only uh, potential buyer at the at the table and to be totally transparent. So we had to uh, kind of come in with the most competitive offer that we could at the time in order to secure the deal for ourselves. And, you know, as you can see, running the numbers, we felt that this purchase price was a, a great one for producing the kind of returns that we uh, like to produce for our investors. Um, so moving on to the little view of the property itself. This is a great overview of uh, of the of the property you can see in the yellow square uh, where the existing building is. You can see the pitch roof. And then this front of the uh, of the parcel, that front third or so is uh, what is the redevelopable parcel, part of the parcel that we think we can get 20 to 30 additional multifamily units on. Uh, we've run this plan pretty far down the road with the city. Uh, we, we are consulting with a local architect that knows the planning. And I'm going to go to this. Uh, here we go that we're consulting with a local architect that knows the planning and zoning office at the city very well. Uh, there's a few things that need to kind of happen over the next two, three years for us to get what we need to subdivide and uh, produce the value that we think we can get out of this. But at the end of the day, we're looking at a potential windfall in year three or so of uh, what we think will be around $1 million once we're able to entitle and, uh, get get this sub get this parcel subdivided and ideally sold off to a, a builder or a developer. So that is a uh, a scenario that again we have not underwritten into our conservative scenario, but it is a, actually a very real possibility that we've already consulted straight with the city about and they have an appetite for it for sure. Uh, just to touch again on floor plans, and the size, just very generous. You can see here on the uh, two bed, one bath, got a number of a couple different closets, including a walk in closet off the uh, master bath, master bedroom, if you will. Also has uh, the bath right off of it. But the uh, walk in closet has a really perfectly located and perfect size uh, little closet behind it that you can see in this lower left corner of the two bed layout. And uh, that is where we're looking at doing washer dryer hookups, adding that value to each unit on the two bed units. So uh, this is a house that's on current, that current redevelopable piece of the property. Uh, it's rentable, it's in good shape. And uh, it's about 1500 square feet, two bed, or sorry, two car garage. And you can see it just, you know, nice, nice landscaping, big mature trees. So this is, this is actually a profit center for us uh, over the next few years until we can uh, do something with the, uh, the parcel that we're going to subdivide.
going to talk about Columbus here for a few minutes. It's a, just a massive part of the story of why this opportunity is so compelling. Uh, and I'm going to let our local guy, Davide, dive in here to uh, what he loves about Columbus. And then I'll add a few thoughts at the end as well. Yeah, thanks, Tate. So, yeah, Columbus is a, a great city to to live in. Uh, I lived in Chicago before. It's it's a city that is uh, just big enough and also small enough. You can get around really easily, although I've noticed through the years recently that there's a lot more traffic. So the city is certainly growing. Uh, the infrastructure is, is being laid out uh, definitely with the arrival of Intel. The city and, and the state uh, are working very hard for that vision, which is to convert Columbus in in, in a great economy. So, um, in terms of real estate, in two thousand nine, uh, Columbus was tested, and uh, we didn't see real estate going down nearly as hard as other markets. Mainly because Columbus already has a, a very robust economy. Uh, with finance, insurance, healthcare, and retail, and uh, as you might know, or you know, as of you know, since uh, Tate has been talking about with Intel, since uh, 2022 when they announced their 20 billion dollar uh, mega factory, it, that right there sat the, the spark basically a, a frenzy of companies, uh, all companies like Microsoft, uh, Facebook, Amazon, uh, all of them bought acres, hundreds of acres right around that area, the New Albany uh, business district uh, mm -hmm. during the past two years. And it's it, every uh, every so often you see news about another company coming in. So uh, the magnitude of this is just tremendous. We yeah. feel very, very, very certain about this market. We love it. And we're lucky that, that we're here. Yeah, very well said. And, and, and Tate, I didn't even mention, you know, Ohio State. You can talk about that, but, you know, it's got, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, to me, in a nutshell, the story of Columbus is a, a few different things. You've got state government, which is a massive economic infrastructure right at the heart of downtown. And just a few miles away is the Ohio State, the Ohio State University, uh, with over 66,000 students, the third largest university in the country. And that juxtaposition of the downtown areas, the different neighborhoods, German Village, Arena District, Short North, Italian Districts, or Italian Village, et cetera, and the campus area just create a very vibrant uh, place to go and and to you know go out for dinner go out for uh, a sporting event uh sh broadway shows you know it's very very vibrant uh in that area and then on a, a little larger msa level the economic story of columbus was always economic uh, and job diversification right it's always been a place that has you know fortune 500 companies and uh, in retail and logistics and, you know, mi military is just like a lot of, a lot of economic factors. And now we've got a tech boom that is, you know, we didn't see coming as of, you know, three years ago now, or three and a half years ago. And now it's, it's so real and it's creating tens of thousands of jobs uh, that will, you know, again, we'll show, show you here in just a minute. So just an incredibly fun story, I guess, an exciting story about Columbus uh, that to me makes it a, a, a kind of an economic island in the middle of Midwest area that I'm from. I'm from Cincinnati and know uh, Ohio, went to Ohio University, and I know Cincinnati really well. My family's still there, but Columbus has something different that's next level above Cincinnati and Indianapolis and all of them. So, uh yeah, you know, we talked about all three of the, well, we didn't talk about the airport. It's a great airport that's under expansion right now because of everything that we're talking about. Um, we talked extensively about Intel already. Again, to point out, phase one it alone is a $20 billion capital investment. Uh, and they're talking about five phases eventually, uh, possibly. And again, phase one is creating uh, 10,000 jobs 
And that's just directly for the Intel factory itself. Again, you add in the uh, all the the businesses that are have are kind of flocking to the area and buying up you know huge pieces of land and buying and building huge facilities. You know that is that's that number is going to be ten x easily, uh, if not more. Uh, and then Riverside Methodist Hospital is literally like less than six minutes from our 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 property at Olentangy. There's a six hundred million dollar expansion in progress, which is going to uh, increase the beds by I think about sixty percent. It's already over a thousand beds at Riverside Methodist and over sixteen hundred employees, in, including uh, about twelve hundred surgeons and physicians. It's a teaching hospital, uh, and is uh, you know is a massive economic driver, literally minutes from our property and. Uh, we anticipate capturing uh, quite a bit of our tenant base from uh, our target demographic, if you will, uh, from this uh, from Riverside Methodist and the surrounding healthcare industry. Davide, you want to speak a little bit about kind of uh, proximity to some of the, some of this stuff uh, from Olentangy? Yeah, absolutely. So. Uh, so actually, the property sits right in the middle between uh, our office and my house. Mm -hmm. um, I could I could drive there in seven minutes, and then another maybe six minutes be at my house. Um, and then uh, Riverside, like you said, is six minutes. I would say possibly less than that uh, south. Um, the way. It, it, the property is located is in between some of the best neighborhoods in Columbus. Upper Arlington is southwest uh, of of the point where the property is, and then east is Clintonville. That's where our office is located, and north is Worthington. That's uh, where I live. Uh, so it, it's it's really in in a very exclusive pocket. It, it's not necessarily you know like high end and and. and you know, like snob kind of feel. It's just uh, real people with high paying jobs uh, in proximity to, uh, you know, retail and, and, and things to do. So on the West, West North uh, is probably covered by the picture of the property is Bridge Park, which is a newer development in Columbus. Uh, and, and it's being praised nationwide. Developers nationwide are looking at replicating that type of development is mm -hmm. it's like a mini city with uh tons of retail restaurants and uh condos and apartments it's it's just you can do you can go there and and just get lost um and that is 12 make it 15 minutes northwest of the property um ohio state is southeast mm, less than 10 minutes three miles then, yeah 3.1 miles yeah, yep. definitely. Yeah. And then farther down, as you can see, downtown Columbus. And the thing about Columbus, too, is population has been on steady growth uh, and at a very good, I think, at the perfect pace. You don't want anything to grow too uh, exponentially in an unsustainable way. Uh, I like the pace of Columbus. It feels just right for, for business. Um, downtown is is like you said, it's a very vibrant downtown, things to do. At the same time, it's not like the best place to live. Tons of people live there, nothing wrong with that, but that's just what I hear. So people prefer to live like a little bit off downtown. And that section where this property sits is like the best area of Columbus, hands down. East Columbus, it gets a little bit rough depending where you go. Uh, so the tenant base is <clears throat> fantastic. <clears throat> fantastic uh young professionals uh graduate students uh that's that's our target demographic there yeah yep faculty adjunct professors hospital yeah, faculty definitely. nurses yes et cetera et cetera yeah 100 percent. all right let's there we go a few more uh items of note nearby lots of retail uh Again, you can see in this lower right corner where, where the airport is uh, in this kind of this circle. Uh, just to point out again, the airport is so nicely located to everything that 
the I, I joke in Columbus, nothing's ever more than like 15, maybe 20 minutes away. Uh, and pretty much true. Like the airport's always, it always seems to be, you know, eight minutes from where we are, 10 minutes from where we are. Uh, so, and then to start to, this is a great aerial view of the, of the property, by the way, uh, you can see the pitch roof, uh, ample parking, lots and lots of parking for the, the, the unit count that we have. Uh, so start to round things out here for you in the way of numbers, just to revisit the floor plan uh, with our square footage of 750 for one bedrooms and 1100 for two bedrooms. Uh, we have been working in close conjunction with our uh, property management team uh, of choice in Columbus called Oakwood Property Management and uh, working with them in conjunction with uh, doing rent comparable studies and that sort of thing. We've come up with our uh, pro forma level rents here at 1350 and 1570 for ones and twos. And uh, we are planning on renovating uh, all of the units at 53 total, 52 uh, apartment units. Uh, and uh, that's where the value add uh, NOI comes from. The increased net operating income adds the value to the property. So that's our value add business plan. And this is uh, this is a financial summary that I won't dive into and you would need glasses. I at least I need glasses to go through this right now, but uh, this is available to you in the uh, offering memorandum that's in our investor portal that we will be providing a link to. Uh, you actually can just go to investwithgreenlight.com. And in the upper right-hand corner, there's a link to our investor portal that you can access right there. So you can see the entire offering memorandum for this deal, including our financial summary, financial pro forma analysis, which is right here. And this is a summary of the investor returns uh, that we see in scenario one, which is of course, without the land entitlement project profit center. Uh, so we're at 22% IRR with just over a, a 2X equity multiple in five years. So again, you put in $100,000 into this investment, you can, we're, based on our projections, expect about uh, $111,000 back, uh, which is, of course, 111% return. And then with the profit center from the land entitlement in year three, it really, of course, boosts, uh, sorry, that's the, there we go, uh, really boosts those return metrics quite a bit. Uh, um, up to uh, over 28% IRR on uh, on that scenario with a 2.45x equity multiple, so 145% increase on uh, on equity amount uh, over five years, and that's over a 20% average cash on cash return. So, again, we we are underwriting both scenarios. Very hopeful and uh, optimistic that we can get the land entitlement uh, done, but we of course are uh, staying conservative with our uh, scenario one and still re still providing over a 2X equity multiple in five years. So we're very excited about that. So uh, that's the the nutshell version of this, of this deal. Of course there is, uh, there of course you may have questions and there is more to know. Uh, so we again, encourage you to go to investwithgreenlight.com and check or click on the investor portal link uh, that'll get you to uh, the investment documents that you need to both review this opportunity and then subscribe to it. So uh, that's all available for you there. Uh, this is an opportunity that we are filling up fast and anticipate being oversubscribed to. So you'll want to do this right away. And uh, and go at least at the very least go make your commitment today in the investor portal, and then on uh, November third is our wire deadline for uh, funds to come in for this opportunity. So, uh, and if you have questions, uh, as as always, go ahead and post them in the Q and A uh, section here, and we will uh, will answer any and all questions that we can. So, uh, a few things to. Uh, cue you into in terms of what to expect after uh, closing, right? Super important stuff. So 
we do we are paying a preferred return to our investors of eight percent on this deal. Uh, that is a uh, per, again a preferred return, which means that it gets paid directly after expenses and debt service and before any other investors, the general partners get paid uh, any profit. So there's uh, an eight percent preferred return that's payable as the cash flow from the from the property allows. That's going to start uh, at the earliest six months after uh, we take ownership. So six months after closing, and uh, that gets paid quarterly and is uh, paid via a direct deposit ACH. Uh, so you, that's, uh, you can expect that after closing. You can also expect, uh, again, access to the investor portal that will have a performance dashboard. It'll house all the investment documents you need, uh, including future tax documents and uh, any other pertinent docs or information. Uh, and then regular communication from us is a huge priority. So you'll be hearing from us uh, usually on a monthly basis with a quarterly newsletter that we send out uh, with any news from the property, performance metrics, indicators, that sort of thing. And uh, anything else that uh, that is important for you to know, which is everything. We're very transparent and uh, believe in sharing the good, the bad, and the ugly with our investors as it happens. So, uh, so you can expect really thorough communication from us. And, uh, and with that, we are really excited to get you on board. We'd love to, love to have you on this ride with us. It's going to be a, a really exciting one. And I think the upside here is just tremendous given uh, kind of all the things that we've gone over today and just the pace and, and growth of what's happening in, in Columbus. So with that, thank you, everybody. And let's uh, go through a few questions. Carl, do we have questions lined up? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Let me uh, pull that up here. Um, so question one, what is the target demographic? Um, Perfect. Great question. Dobby, yeah. So uh, I kind of sort of touch on that, like in that area, Definitely young professionals, uh, it, since it's uh, in close proximity to Ohio State, uh, grad students mostly, which is amazing. You don't want undergrad students, right? Um, and then, you know, it, it could be, you know, single parents. Um, yeah, that's that's an area that is definitely ha has a very solid demographic with, uh, you know, high paying jobs as well. So, Perfect. Great, great. Uh, another question: What if interest rates are higher after year two? Really good okay. question. Yeah. So the way that we've modeled this uh, property is that a a upon what's called stabilization, right, which is what happens when you improve a property and uh, improve the thereby improving also the the revenue of the property, the operating income of the property. At that point, we are modeling that the income uh, will more than cover what we need to have it cover in the way of uh, expenses, debt service, and uh, investor preferred return. Should interest rates be higher than we think they are going to be uh, in our underwriting, we still have uh, a fair amount of buffer there uh, to make our numbers uh, work pretty dang well. Uh, you know, we're already. We're at a 22%. So if we lose a point or two, we certainly don't want to or plan on that, but uh, that you know that's still a, a very nice return and still around a 2X equity multiple, which is generally our, or simply put, that's our, our goal is about a 2X equity multiple in five years. So uh, so we've modeled covering that with, with, uh, with cash flow surplus essentially. And Carl, we we have a cap rate on on the loan, right? So, maybe yeah, you could... we have a, a rate cap on the yeah, loan. Yeah, cap. yes, yeah. yeah. So we have so, so I know I know I've talked to a fixed rate loan. Yeah, yeah. So I've talked to a a lot of people in private equity and lending, and uh, the assumption of going into a six percent, uh, I feel good about it because I've heard even like five five and a half. Um, yeah. But yeah, like Dave says, we definitely uh, tested it going into uh, up to an 8.75 rate, which is going to be uh, impossible. 
that that, that definitely won't happen because right now a, a similar loan to what we're going to be taking at that time a permanent loan uh today will probably be somewhere in the high six sevens right yep well said awesome, great, awesome. Great. Got another question uh how well do you know the property manager um i, I can answer that one uh, Oakwood Property Management um, is one of the oldest and most respected property management companies uh, in the area. Uh, they've been uh, around for over 50 years and have over 10,000 doors under management uh, in the Columbus and Ohio area, but centrally in, in Columbus. Uh, and that's one of the biggest reasons why we know them. We chose them for that. We have another property in New Albany, uh, which is a 52 unit, and we have them managing that one for us. And, uh, and it's, you know, 52, or I'm sorry, uh, it's 43 units. It's called 43 at New Albany. And having a, having a property of that size, it's essential to have a sister property where you can share the on-site PM. So with Oakwood's, you know, breadth of, of, of properties, what they can do is, is match up a property like this with another one, split the cost of, of the, of the on-site property management as they go back and forth. So with another property close by, they can, they can co-manage and that keeps the cost down, which is essential. So we're going to be doing the same thing with the whole and Tangi. There are two target uh, sister properties in the area. And one of them will be the sister to this one, share the expenses of that on site and keep our expenses low, which will increase our NOI. Yeah. 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 And if I can add to, to Oakwood, uh, uh, the minute that uh, you guys told me Oakwood and I mentioned it to Laura, to my wife, she's been in property management for, for a long time. Uh, she's very familiar with them. She knows a few people that work there. Same thing. Uh, su su great reputation, being around for decades. Yeah. And so uh, I think we're in great hands, even though as a team, we have the ability to uh, manage it in-house if need yeah. be. So, right. but Yeah, I, I think all of us are really aligned here. And we all agree that we feel very fortunate to be working with Oakwood on this property. We're we're grateful uh, that they are willing to to manage this for us. They've done just a great job for us at our our Class A uh, forty three unit out in New Albany, which is by the way is very close to that Intel uh, factory site. So we, you know, again, that was one that we had in process when the Intel announcement was made. So we kind of uh, we we really feel great about that one too. So and again, this is like big big picture like Columbus is so exciting and and uh we anticipate growing there uh as you know as in synergy with uh with realist and uh so the opportunities are going to continue for our investors moving forward here as well other other questions Carl yeah uh let's see who will pay for the expenses for the subdivision um, we've done this several times before uh, with other properties, and so with this particular property, uh, we have we, there's a timeline. We won't be able to begin it for a few years, so we, as a general partnership, will be funding the money that it takes to run it through planning and have the architectural plans made. We don't want to raise funds for it now because it's going to take place in several years. We don't have to sit on that money and pay interest on it. So, in the interest of the of the whole project. The general partnership will fund that, and we will just give it reimbursed uh, on when when that is uh, when in the disposition of that land. Um, let's see. Do you have concerns about the current state of the economy? No. Great question. Yeah, uh, I think yeah, like this days, uh, you know, there's a little bit of a grim feeling, you know, with the war going on or multiple two wars going on in the world. Uh, the high interest rates, uh, the, the, there seems to be some sort of pressure. Um, and there is, there's certainly pressure. Uh, but uh, the down cycle in real estate, it's already, it's already, it started uh, over a year ago, well over a year ago. Year ago. And uh, as you might know, like all the up cycles last way longer than 15, 18 years. And then the down cycles are way shorter. So uh, we are probably in the middle of it, towards the end of it, in my opinion. Uh, Columbus is a resilient economy with tons of upside. So yeah. uh, I think it's a good time to get in. Uh, there's a lot of capital on the sidelines that is eager to invest. 
And the minute that you hear the Fed putting a pause or maybe indicating that they're done raising rates, it's going to be, uh, you know, insane. Everybody's going to yeah. be trying to buy property. And so I think uh, we were buying an amazing property uh, at a great time. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, of course, I, I think that the obvious answer to that question is we're obviously all concerned about the economy and, I, you know, I'm sure you all are as well, uh, you know, and with investors and viewers here. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we're doing what we're doing is we feel like now more than ever, this asset class of commercial multifamily uh, in hot markets that with a lot of demand, with a lot of uh, economic growth and activity uh, is a great place to be uh, invested into, right? And we love bringing uh, we love bringing the opportunities to you guys to to invest in these with us uh, because we feel so strongly that uh, in we've done uh, a lot of things to to mitigate a lot of the downside risks, right? Mainly, first and foremost, just investing in Columbus is a mitigation of downside risk because. We've kind of alluded to this, but there's a micro insulation uh, factor in in the Columbus economy, and you know you've got a, an and it's it's a, a number of different things, right? It's not just this tech boom; that's a huge part of it, but you've got a a very successful, well funded state government uh, that is a, a huge economic base there in Columbus, and uh, and then the Ohio State University, massive, massive. Uh, economic foundational base, Fortune 500 companies, research hospitals, et cetera, et cetera. It's the, so again, just the the diversification there. Uh, Columbus is a story that uh, is worth knowing a lot about and worth considering uh, investing into. And again, we feel just to kind of come full circle here, we feel like this particular asset at the foot of Riverside Methodist expansion, $600 million, uh, just up the road from Ohio State and downtown. And uh, it, we feel is is a perfect, uh, almost capturing lightning in a bottle sort of scenario with a value add component, with a potential development component. Uh, we feel like this is just a pretty exceptional, compelling opportunity. And, and uh, we're obviously excited about it. So we'd love to get you guys into it and, and have you on board. Uh, again, reach out to any of the three of us uh, immediately. If you have any questions, want to get on a call and uh, go to the easiest way to uh, find the investor portal is uh, go to investwithgreenlight.com. Uh, we will also do our best to email you a uh, direct link to the investor portal as well. Davide, any last thoughts, final words? Um, yes. Uh, so basically, yeah, we'll go ahead and email everyone that uh, we've been talking to about this opportunity and instructions on how to invest will be there. Um, did, do we have any more questions or? Yes. Yes. Actually, there's, oh. there's one that I would like to answer. Um, okay. Gotcha. How do you invest with a 1031? Is that possible? Mm. And yes, we, uh, our legal team has drafted up a tick agreement. So investors who would like to invest with a 1031 uh, were able to do that. Um, and uh, then that brings me to another thing, which is minimum investment. So the minimum investment for uh, for everybody is $50,000. Uh, if you're doing it, uh, a 1031, our minimum is $100,000. So, um, so, you know, 1031, we're very friendly with that. Yeah, super important. I'm so glad that we covered that. So yeah, 1031 eligible. A tick for those of you who may not know is a tenant in common structure, which allows us to accept 1031 exchange uh, funds. So uh, that's you know huge opportunity here as far as that goes as well. So awesome. Uh, did we touch base on the tax deductions uh, year we one? Will, kind of will be, yeah, it's great. We will be doing a cost segregation study on this property. Uh, typically, we see uh, you know a forty to fifty percent uh taxable loss essentially that our investors receive on their investment so you invest uh, again a hundred thousand dollars you'll receive let's say a 40 45 fifty thousand dollar uh loss that gets applied to your uh, your taxes that year and uh, that's again that's a cost segregation study bonus appreciation if you want to look that up and that happens in year one of ownership 
That's a good, good question. That's it for the questions. All right. All right, guys. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Appreciate you guys. And uh, we're here to uh, to help and serve any way that we can in your, your investing journey moving forward. And uh, look forward to connecting and hopefully getting you on board this uh, this awesome investment. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.